Hello folks and welcome to the 10th episode of Lilia's Sunday podcast. Uh, so I'm very happy to record this podcast because it's number 10, right? So it's a very good number. It means that there are lots of podcasts available to you now, right? And this one will be the second podcast in the series of the types of studying. So if, you're, if you've been following my podcast, you know that episode 8 was about self-studying and this one is about studying in a group. So basically, I'm going to talk about pluses and minuses of studying with other people apart from a teacher. So if you're studying on a one-to-one basis, so you normally have a teacher just sitting opposite you or just, you know, just standing or taking whatever position opposite you, right? Uh, but if you're studying with a group, yeah, so there are so many people that there could be like four or ten people, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to start this podcast uh, with my personal experience. Uh, so over seven years of teaching English to mainly individual learners, I've come up to a conclusion that most of them decide studying with a private tutor after they've experienced studying English in a group with other students. What makes it even more interesting is that nine times out of ten, they suggest that studying with a group is ineffective and they find it better to study one-to-one with a professional teacher. And the truth is this, studying with a group may be effective, but only if it's carried out in a certain way. Uh, Well, here is the thing which seems to annoy students the most. They want to talk uh, with with the teacher most of the time because the teacher is knowledgeable and qualified. Uh, But again, most of the time students are put in pair with with another student, may speak English worse or be less motivated or interested in learning English or vice versa. They might be extremely talkative yeah, and will let anyone say a word. And this is the main reason why people choose against the group and go for a tutor. OK, now try to think logically here. English is no more the language that belongs to Anglophones or, or people of the English speaking community. I mean, just people who live in, in English speaking countries. It's not their language anymore. It is a language of the global community. And if you go out to the real world, there'll be way less native speakers speaking English, right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, that, this is what I want to say. There'll be less native speakers speaking English than non-native speakers who you'll have to get your message through to. And the ones that they won't always be of the same level as you, right? So they might be a level higher, a level lower, right? It doesn't really matter. But it's very, very difficult to find a person whose level is just like yours, right? So it's just super difficult. And if you're super worried about pronunciation, and that's why I want to speak English solely to the teacher, I'm going to disappoint you a little bit. So there is a chance you won't always get accurate pronunciation on the teacher's side if they are not a native speaker. So the word stress and intonation might be okay, but they might sometimes get their sounds wrong, yeah, and forget to link words, which is part and parcel of speaking English. Right, so especially if you're studying at a low level, I had an opportunity to take a look at English school systems from inside, yeah, and I just, I can just tell you that novice teachers, I mean, like those who have just joined the team, tend to teach lower levels, and it doesn't always mean that they're just fascinating and just uh, extra super fantastic speakers themselves. So chatting with a student who's really motivated and inspired and open to new ways of learning may even be a virtue, right? Do you know what I mean? Well, I have prepared a list of positive things about studying with a group, and here it is. Let's see. So here it's number one. It's fun and it's funny. It's normally well balanced, so you don't have to do the same activity all the time. It depends on the teacher to a large extent, of course, right? But uh, normally just teachers try to vary their activities, yeah? So, so like your, your syllabus, like basically the program that you're following is varied, yeah? And it means that you, you can basically have a look at different ways of learning, right? And, and choose the way of learning that suits the best choosing of those that uh, you have uh, at the language school or, or the ways that you, you're using in your lessons, right? 
So those are two first points. It's fun and the syllabus is varied. And number three is you meet lots of new people who are connected by the same goal and it's to learn English. Isn't this something that you really want? Yeah, you can share your experiences with them and listen to their ideas and learn from them, which is a great thing to do. Right. Listen to other people. And if you see that someone is a successful learner, why not just ask that person a question? OK, mate, how did you get through to this level? Right. So what what have you done to be such a fantastic speaker? Right. And there's nothing wrong about this. You don't have to be shy. You just have to to be sincere and just, you know, to to be able to to realize that certain people are better learners than you are and then you could just you know share your experience with them and listen to their experience and just you know to, to basically enrich it to each other in, in terms of learning English right okay and number four is you feel motivated to stay on the same level as everyone else and not get behind because if you get behind you'll just feel bored and ready to leave the group I just just you know go to go to try another method of study and probably get disappointed and gutted after that because it didn't really suit you and the only reason for that was just the fact that you got behind the group and you shouldn't have done that right and number five on my list is the fact that lessons in a group usually start at a certain time so you feel obliged to attend right before you enroll for a course uh, you just you're 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 given a chance to have a look through the 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 um, available times um, at well at which the lessons might start right and uh, you certainly have to pay the fee for for a course in the beginning of the course right and and after you've paid the money you need to make sure that you keep to the schedule right that you don't get behind the schedule that you don't really miss on the lessons because just okay i'm not really in the mood to go to a lesson I'll just you know i just i just feel i, I just feel a little bit of headache right and I'd rather stay at home and watch a TV program or something yeah so it won't really work here right because the course that you're doing uh, keeps you organized and basically just keeps you um, up to date on what's going on uh, with, with the course yeah right okay and here I have a list of negative things that uh, most of my students found exist about learning English in a group. So number one is uh, the most common one. And this is the thing, if you don't understand something, the teacher won't usually stop and discuss the same thing with you for, for another 10 minutes because they have the whole group of 12 to 15, I don't know, or eight people if you're a lucky one, yeah? Just eight people just craving for knowledge and some of them will just go faster. And if you're unlucky enough to be the weakest student in a group, the teacher won't just stop and just tell you everything, yeah? Just explain everything to you just again, uh, just t 10 times yeah, more th than you need, right? Or than the group needs because they have to go with the flow of the group. And here is the next thing. You may feel that you don't have to do your homework every time because in the class, there'll be people who'll probably do it and the teacher will check it with them and and leave you where you are so you won't really get punished hard for not doing your homework and in reality this means that your homework is only your responsibility the teacher can't control it doesn't really it, it's not really a good thing about studying in a group because just you know if there are 10 people in a group and you're not doing your homework all the time so that means just well, all right, okay, you might think, uh, okay, just I might do it on Thursday, right? Or I do it over the weekend because I have some free time and then on the weekend your relatives come over and you can't just do it. So uh, basically, and it piles up and at the end of the month, it's just a huge pile of undone homework that you can't really cope with because there's so much time, right? That you need to, to, to spend on doing it. Um, so right and uh the final negative thing is about methodology if you don't like the teacher's method but the others do you can't really change it unless you bring up this question with everyone in the group and they'll agree but often teachers who work for english schools have a prescribed program they can't change so 
they will just continue teaching um, in just, you know, in their school's manner, no, no matter if you like it or not. Yep. So those are basically the three things that I think might be some just negative things about studying in a group. But please don't worry if you won't speak to the teacher all the time in a group. Speaking with a peer may actually give you even more ideas and inspire you, right? This is something I've talked about before. Your peers might inspire you massively. A professional teacher will organise pairs in a way that would be mutually beneficial for you and your partner. So studying in a group is an equally good option if you like organisation and discipline. You might of course be disciplined by your teacher if you're studying one-to-one. -one. A qualified teacher will most certainly find the way to motivate you. Do you know what I mean? So the question should be how to find the right school. So. Yeah, all right, so here is your decision. I've decided to study in a group. How do I find the right language school? Um, okay, I've already recorded a podcast on this, so go to the Knowledge Day special episode of my Sunday podcast to answer this question. And I hope I could give you some ideas to, to make the right choice, yeah? Okay, and uh, so, right, okay, that's about it for this podcast. On vk.com, I'm planning to post up the compilation of 10 podcasts that I've already recorded. And if you've missed some episodes, right, uh, you could just make sure to check them out. Otherwise, go to liliacardenas.podomatic.com. This is L-I-L-I-A-K-A-R-D-E-N-A-S.podomatic.com. And find all the episodes of Lily's Sunday podcast there. Right. Okay, thank you very much for listening to the podcast. Uh, I know it's Sunday evening, so if you're listening to the podcast every Sunday, you probably don't really have much time to just to, to do your own stuff because it's late in the evening now. And, well, okay, just tomorrow is, is the working day and you have to go to work. And if you're lucky enough, you, you just could stay at home and just, you know, listen to the podcast tomorrow. Uh, right, okay, thank you very much, guys, for listening to this. Uh, I hope that it's not been a super long podcast and you've listened it to the end because if you have then you're an extra special listener and i really love you all okay bye bye guys talk to you next sunday